Good morning, everyone. It's Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. Um, 7.30 weekday mornings, Central Standard Time. Speaking of that daylight time, the daylight savings time, we're in the middle of Texas. Hey, when I went on my prayer walk this morning, there was actually sunlight. <laughs> that rocks for Jesus. I mean, normally, you know, sometimes I'll pray before the show. And, uh, well, I'll usually pray before the show, obviously. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. So I always pray. But sometimes I'll go on a prayer walk before the show. And usually when I go on these prayer walks, I'm looking at Orion. You know, I come outside, and I'm like, hey, man, what is up with that? It's dark. This is not normal. It's not normal to get up and talk to people at 7 o'clock, and it'd be dark. So here's my obligatory sip of coffee. I'm sorry, I do do the uh, slurp thing. Basically, just so you know that I'm actually drinking some coffee for my BTR audience, but for you on uh, video, here's my cup, actually drinking some. And I have had a problem with sleeping. Hmm. When I drink too much coffee, sometimes I just can't sleep at all. So Even tea, I have to cut that stuff off. Even then, I don't know. So there's lots going on in the news. First off, I want to talk about our sponsor. This month's sponsor, we, uh, we're... Thank you for last month's sponsor, which was Linda from Letters for the Lord Prison Ministry dot com. But now we have Steve from Holy Fire Japan. Uh, for my video audience, here it is, HolyFireJapan.com. And he loves God with a heart from Japan. And if you go through he's a, a Christian, an American Christian missionary to Japan. There's only one percent of people that profess Christ in Japan. So this is a worthwhile ministry. But not only that, he has a very interesting blog, Holy Fire Japan, right here from his February second, twenty thousand thirteen. If you read my book, um, um, God had really touched me about something was going to happen March eleventh um, in two thousand eleven. You know when they had the earthquake and the tsunami and the largest meltdown in history and he was a follower of mine at that time I'm like something's gonna happen anyway um, they had only in Japan radiation check for food at your local store so he has lots of interesting things on his blog I mean you can just sit there and peruse through and go wow you know it's kinda like vicariously living through Steve and it's a worthwhile ministry notice that he has uh, Conrad rocks over here on the sidebar and he also has the donate button also if you if you want to contact Steve I'm sure he'd love to talk to you his um, Twitter right here for my video audience is Steve Tsunami that's Twitter forward slash Steve Tsunami for blog talk radio that's S-T-E-V-E -E, and then Tsunami like the wave T-S-U-N-A-M-I and I find that somewhat prophetic that that was his his name if you'll know if you follow me you know that I am into the prophetic. Now, something, there's lots of stuff going on in the news. Lots. Actually, I don't know where to begin. It, it, let me tell you how I feel. If you, if you know, you know, we can put on dresses and hold hands. I don't, <laughs> here's, how, here's how I feel. You know, but I don't walk after my feelings. We have to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. But here's how I feel about this. I'm getting this sense. I'm getting this pulse on the economy. I'm getting this pulse on the people. You know, from reading all my news sources that come to me, Associated Press, Reuters, all this stuff coming at me. And then I'm listening to all sides. That's what I like to do. I like to listen to all sides. And then, you know, basically I'm looking at things through a Christian lens. That's how I do it. I don't like you know, I, I even believe Christians are supposed to come out of the world. If you've been following me for any length of time, you'll notice that I have kind of a method to this madness. One of the things that I do is I I take a look, you know, I point at the things in the world and I say, look, the world is not your answer. Jesus is the way. And I see many people trying to solve the ills. You know, they're, they're, they have... The beatitude, or blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, we're hungering and thirsting for righteousness with what's going on, but we're not looking to Jesus. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you notice that one of the things I was doing a few years ago is I'm like, look, politics don't work. These people lie, 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 lie. So I was getting a lot of libertarians. And the libertarian fundamental philosophy 
is love your neighbors yourself. You know, leave them alone. Don't put a yoke of bondage on them. Don't restrict them. If they want to go smoke pot or something in another state or whatever, it doesn't hurt me any, <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, there is that fundamental philosophy of love your neighbors yourself. The only thing is the libertarians are missing Christ. And every time they're trying to solve an ill, every time they're trying to solve an ill or a problem or they're seeking righteousness, there's that God-shaped hole and they haven't found Christ. So basically one of the things I talk about is principalities work through personalities and I've never seen so much turmoil and angst as I have now. People are lying in front of Congress, getting away with it. If I did that, they'd string me up and kill me. You know, you know what I'm talking about. People are bald-faced lying. Laws are getting passed. I mean, you know, it's against the will of the people. Yeah, I did a poll on Soda Head. Let me show you this one. You guys are going to, well, let me uh, find it over here. <sighs> if you want to follow me, I'm, uh, what am I? I think I'm Conrad Rocks. Sodaham, sodahead.com. It's a place where I take some polls. And I want to show you something that will blow your mind. I mean, this is, it makes sense. Should Congress, this is a question I asked. There was only 52 votes. But here's the question for my video audience. Should Congress read the bills before voting? Now, let me, let me just ask you, you know, doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that just make sense? Shouldn't, I mean, how can you pass a law that you haven't read? <laughs> I mean, come on, do, wouldn't even a second grader know that? However, Congress doesn't read the bills. I mean, they pass this mammoth legislation. And here we have, there's one vote. And you know what the guy said? He pushed the wrong button, I think. <laughs> there's one vote that said no. 96% of Americans believe that you know Congress should read the bills, and you, if you read some of the, some of the uh, the top opinion here, which got seven raves, not only read the bills but also show comprehension of the terms and provide for their constituency to express their opine in the bills as well, with at least waiting a period of 90 to 120 days of open public access comments and listen to the input of citizens. So we obviously th see that they're not following the will of the people. If you remember in October of 2008 when they did the bailout, you know, it was splitted between 90% no and hell no. That Nobody wanted that done. However, they ram, they're ramming it down their throats. So we can obviously see that we don't have a representative republic. Now, I'm a Christian. I look at all this stuff through a Christian lens. My message is government will not save you. You could put the Pope in as president <laughs> and things would still go to hell. <laughs> Need some more coffee. Hmm. Now, sticking on, sticking to Soda Head, I want to show you another poll that I took. This is one in light of uh, what's going on today. And this one is viral. I asked a question. Dude, I don't even remember what it was. Yesterday, maybe, or day before? It was, it was very recent. <clears throat> I already have 554 opinions, and there's like 173 votes. Before I show it to you, I want you to know that no matter, we, we keep taking our eyes, Satan wants you to look at the birdie. You know how when they're taking a picture, they look at the birdie. Or say cheese, you know. I used to bite a horse's ear when we when we were trying to break a horse when we were raised in West Texas. Like I know how to break horses. I mean, you know, I've I've participated in it a little bit. One of the things that you do in this horse, he's naturally free. You know, he doesn't want this saddle on his back. So one of the things that you do is you bite the horse's ear. You twist it and you bite it. And that horse's concentration, the concentration, he no longer thinks about the saddle that's being put on his back, but he focuses on his ear hurting. 
So he remains perfectly still because he knows if he moves that that ear will hurt worse. That's what's happening to the American people. They're biting our ear and putting a saddle on our back. They're distracting us and they're feeding us poison. They're putting saddle on our back, violating the 13th Amendment. I know you guys hear me talk about this and you don't think that it's, you know, you probably don't think that it's relative. But, you know, here's, here's a real short... You can read this bill. Remember when the Bill of Rights? You can put the Bill of Rights on a playing card. Seriously, you can. <laughs> the text of the 13th Amendment um, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime wherever the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or place or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. They're making us do things we don't want to do. Now, what I'm what I'm pointing out here is the fruit, not not the root. People are looking at the fruit. Many people are looking at the leaves of evil, the leaves of the tree of evil, and they're talking about the leaves, they're talking about the fruit, but nobody's dealing with the root. And the root is America needs to repent. I've talked about it several times. For those of you, I'm having I'm gaining a lot of lit- listeners here, so I'm going to repeat something. Um, Second Chronicles seven fourteen is probably one of the hallmark scriptures of conradrocks.net. And people are not paying attention to this rhema word. You may say, well, what has this got to do with America? This has to do with Solomon's dedication of the temple. Um, And you're like, this is out of context. Well, no, it's not. There's something called a rhema word. This is where the Spirit touches the word. In October of 1996, something happened that inspired the book The God Chasers, written by Tommy Tenney, right? Tommy Tenney in his first chapter mentions that Christian Tabernacle, the Spirit of God came in uh, right after Pastor Hurd said this scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Right then, the plexiglass pulpit splits up, a clap of thunder is heard, it splits in two. This this pulpit is still into the foyer of Christian Tabernacle Church to this day. I've been there, that's one of the reasons I went to the church. Uh, I have a friend there that's an associate pastor, He, he was there when this happened. And America is, this didn't make mainstream news. Okay, it made a book, a Christian by an author, Christian author. But you know what? Even people's quote unquote Christians are not paying attention. Christians are not paying attention to what God is saying. And you know what God says to that? <laughs> Do not refuse him who speaks from heaven. And that's what's happening um, here. Hebrews twelve twenty five. Um, you know, my sheep hear my voice. Christian, the real Christians are supposed to hear the voice of God. And I'm not trying to be funny here. I mean, this is this is actually what the Bible says. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape them who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away him from who speaks from heaven? America is not listening to the message of God that started in October of 1996. So now we have things like this soda head pole that I'm about to bring to you right now after this Commercial. Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the contribute button on the sidebar at ConradRocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. Hey, just so you guys know, uh, over the weekend, uh, Conrad Rocks, or the Coffee with Conrad, on Blog Talk Radio, has increased 400% in October compared to September's numbers. Well, this weekend, um, yesterday, I checked November, and I, this is my second show for November, okay? So the listening numbers were 40% of the entire month of October, yesterday. 
And then today, it was like 65%. So welcome, new listeners. Uh, a lot of you guys are on iTunes. Listen, if you like the show, be sure and share your favorite episodes on Facebook. Facebook actually is a really good social media sharing tool, uh, I think, because it's organic. When I say organic, you know, it's people you know. Uh, on Twitter, you know, I, I'm paid to do um, tweets every once in a while, like Walmart's paying me $10 to, you know, it seems kind of silly, but man's got to make some money. <laughs> mm. Anyway, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's Most Radical Man on Twitter. But uh, yeah, the numbers are picking up. Praise God. You know, the message, my message, my gospel is to the lukewarm. You know, there's many people sitting in the pews next to you yesterday that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about how they're biting our ear and putting the saddle on our back right now with this soda head poll. Do people have a right to free health care? I've been tweeting it out. This thing went viral. 554 opinions, 186 votes. And for the video audience, we're going to take a look at the demographics here. Um, here's the demographics. First off, we have 16%, which is only 30 votes out of the 186, say yes, people do have a right to free health care. 76% say no. Now, I just want you to think for a second. 76% say no. Why did Obamacare get passed if 76% of people think that you do not have a right to free health care. Does it look like a representative republic? Does it look like principalities are working through personalities? All right. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the... Um, here's the gender. Well, this is one of the things I like to do. I like to sit here and look at the numbers and go, you know, because I used to run businesses and I'd, you'd run them off numbers. Okay. Um, in other words past performance is not necessarily an indicator of future success but you you can pretty much you can pretty much bet that it's going to stay the same or if you see a trend if you see a trend you can pretty much you can follow that trend that's basically how you make money in business so i like looking at demographics i like looking at statistics and see what i can learn from them here for my video audience let's look at gender gender well there's not much there 22 uh, 22% of females say yes People have a right. 15% of males. I don't think that's telling. Let's look at age. I bet there's something to do with age. Let's see. Oh, my. Okay. 50% of children, 13 through 17, So yeah. So that's half of our future voters. <laughs> they have, they're not able to vote yet. But half of them. This is what they're thinking. Where do you think they're getting their information. Okay? 18 to 24. The next highest demographic that thinks yes. 18 to 24. These are the ones that were brainwashed recently. Okay? They believe yes. Uh, and then it goes down from 25 to 34. 25 percent. So we have 50 percent to the 13 to 17. So half of the future voters believe that there is a right to free health care. I wonder how many of them know the Bill of Rights, how many have read the Declaration of Independence, how many of them know the Constitution. 33% of 18 through 24, 25% of 25 through 34, and then we run into a very interesting demographic, none. None in the 35 through 44 category believe that. Now I'm going to say that thinking just kind of soberly, I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the 35 to 44, these are the people that hadn't gotten sick yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they hadn't gotten sick yet. They're not old and they don't need the money, you know, they're still working. I'm just I'm just assuming. And then we see kind of a trend, 45 to 54, there's 28%. So the older you get, hey, man, you know, I need some of that. Give me some of that Obamacare. So anyway, that's that demographic. Let's talk about religion. Oh, my, this is going to be telling. I'm excited. I haven't looked at these people. I haven't looked at them. 
For those of you in the Lamp Passes, Texas area, we're going to have an aglow meeting Tuesday. I know this is a worldwide broadcast, but we're doing a glow meeting. It's a semi-prophetic Tuesday night at the Holiday House, 7 o'clock. I'll be there. I'm not doing anything except worshiping and listening. There's going to be a guest speaker. If you're interested, tweet me, Most Radical Man, on Twitter. I'm also going to change my Facebook Conrad Rocks thing, so you can go there. If you guys have any interesting news articles, Linda sends me quite a bit of really good stuff. Hopefully I can get to the beer drinking church. That sounds like a good story. <laughs> anyway, you can send me uh, you can send me articles on the Conrad Rocks Facebook page, or you can tweet them to me. I, I, I look at them. Um, anyway, the Conrad Rocks Facebook page I'm going to try to put in this blog talk radio show. Also, be sure and share these shows. People need to know. People need to know Jesus, not just know about him. If you follow me, you'll know what I'm talking about. So let's go to this religious view thing. I'm really excited. I don't know. I feel like a drum roll. Okay, I don't have a drum, but whatever. <clears throat> okay. Agnostic. Wow. Okay. Agnostic for my BTR audience. 79% say no. Atheist. 54% say no, but 31% say yes. 31% of atheists say yes. Now, Buddhists, this is interesting. I don't know exactly how many Buddhists are in here, but 100% Buddhists say yes. I guess they're thinking that government can save them. I, I read a little bit of Buddhist sayings when I was back in those heathen New Age moments. And um, I don't remember them relying. I, I don't remember the text that well. But anyway, okay, Christian. Christian is 88% saying no. And, you know, there's there's this guy... Um, he's a, a leftist, and he, he does this show called Blast the Right or whatever. Every once in a while, I'll listen to him. And, man, he just he does this argument for Christianity. He just completely misses the boat. Um, as Christians, we're not supposed to steal money and give it to somebody else. So, anyway, okay. Jewish, 50%. Muslim, here's another one. Here's another one. Muslim and Buddhism are 100%. Uh, people think they have a right, an inherent right, to free health care. Pagan, 100%, think you have a right. Okay. I find that interesting. Political views, oh my gosh, this is probably going to be the best demographic ever. Political views. Liberal, 63% believe that you have a right. Progressive, 60% believe you have a right moderate 19 percent believe you have a right so that's liberal is 63 percent believe you have a right progressive 60 percent 19 percent of moderates now the conservative and libertarian conservative is 97 percent says no you don't have a right okay libertarian is 77 percent so let's get into some of the arguments i mean these obviously that's going to reflect um the top argument here is people don't have a right to free anything um, nothing's free. Someone has to pay for it. Thank you, Claiborne. If you guys comment on Soda Head, I might shout you out. Here's an unsure. Nobody has a right to free health care. If that were the case, I would want to know who's paying for it on their behalf. But all those who actually pay in the system of providing health care are entitled. So that's what you, you could have that through personal insurance. You don't really need a government to do that for you, right? Oh, oh, here's one. Unsure. Only when the government guarantees such a right. Woo Apparently they have not read the Bible. You know, God gives us these rights. It's also enshrined in the Declaration of Independence. Of these, you know, we're endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, and to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men to secure those rights. A lot of people don't get that. They are founding fathers of America... The original intention for government uh, was to secure the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not to put people under slavery like they're doing. Um, anyway, so this person thinks that rights are granted by government. They're not. They're unalienable, granted by God. 
Here in the UK, the answer is yes. So he believes that it's subject or subjective or relative according to your government. Um, now, here we go. No, people have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, period. The, the thing that I find interesting here is I did read one, one argument by a liberal that said, <clears throat> uh, and I'm not anti-liberal because, you know, if you think about it, if liberalism becomes full circle, they'll be back to conservative pretty soon. <laughs> Liberal and progressive, basically, you're just going to come right back. That's, that's how the history of nations go. Things change, then there's a revolution, and then it all starts over in liberty. You know, you go from liberty to, uh, how does that circle go? The, the circle of revolution? Anyway, it revolves. That's what it, liberalism and progressive, it eventually revolves full circle. But what I'm trying to do is get everybody pointed to Christ. And I thought of a, I thought of a Christian perspective here. I was praying about it. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that I remember Christ saying, and Jesus said, and out of the mul one out of the multitude said to him, okay, teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said unto him, man, who made me judge or divider over you? I'm going to put this over here for my video audience. <clears throat> who made me judge or divider over you? Then he said to them, Take heed and keep yourselves from all covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possess possesses. So what's happening here is this man wants somebody else, <laughs> Jesus even, to give him his brother's stuff. And Jesus said, Look, dude, you're coveting. That's not yours. You're coveting. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things. And then he goes on, you know, Jesus is basically, we need to worry about godly things, the things of the Spirit. Um, let's see. Then he says, Jesus says some other things. Sell that which you have and give alms. Make for yourselves purchases which wax not old, purses which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens which faileth not, for where the thief draweth near, neither doth moss destroy us. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Notice that Jesus is telling the Christian believers to sell what they have and give alms. Give, that means to give to the poor people. Um, you know, we're supposed to do it directly. He doesn't say, give to the government. Okay? Nowhere does he say that. And if you'll notice also, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. There is this one guy who's trying to be cute. He says, who's my neighbor? Well, your neighbor's the person next to you, bozo. You don't have to make this long. Your neighbor's not someone a thousand miles away from you. It's someone you have power to bless. When, G when the psalmist says, my cup runneth over, what happens? 90 seconds. Oh, no, I only have a 90-second show, 90, 30-minute show today for some reason. Oh, that's terrible. How did that happen? Anyway... When my cup runneth over, um, the oil pours from God, and you bless those around you. That's when my cup runneth over. That's what the psalmist is talking about. Also, um, in Acts, it said they sold their possessions, and part of them, all every man had mean. They didn't. Sixty seconds. They didn't hoard their stuff. Also, in Malachi three ten, we keep hearing about the the tithing doctrine. You know, we give to the church so that the poor are fed. Bring you the tide in the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove now with, wherewith, said Jehovah of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven. So the, the, we give to the church so that there's food in the storehouse for the poor. It doesn't say anything about the government. So anyway, I wanted to bring that to your attention, guys. Tomorrow we got a lot more news. I'm going to stretch it out for an hour. Somehow we had a little glitch. We only gone for half an hour today. I'm sorry. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher.